Hispanic Lifestyle had a chance to go behind the scenes and set up our cameras in the kitchen of Boca de Papo. Chef Jesus Castaneda, who has been with the company for over 11 years, prepared three new items making their menu debut. Chef Castaneda spoke about the origins of Buca de Pepo's style of Italian cooking. You know, the style that we have, Buca de Pepo, it's uh, Southern Italy. We call it from La Cucina Povera, which is the poor kitchen. You know, it's simple, but with a lot of, uh, a lots of flavor, ingredients, you know, basic stuff, you know. People from uh, Southern Italy, you know, they made their own cheeses, uh, they uh, do their own wines, you know, I mean, they uh, process the, the, their, uh, the meats, you know, all the stuff, you know, they're, they're poor people, but they're rich on flavor. Next, we meet the Paisano of Buca di Peppo, Richard Erk, who gave us the background of the Italian restaurant. Buca di Peppo means Joe's Basement in Italian. It was founded in the mid-90s uh, in uh, Minneapolis. Uh, Buca di Peppo means Joe's Basement. As you go through our restaurant, you'll see the lower ceiling aspects of it. Uh, that's to give the impression of being down below under, underground in the, in, in the basement aspect. You don't see any windows, so it's a little on the, on the dark side. Uh, we're basically a celebratory restaurant which caters to the, the masses of family dining uh, and larger parties, uh, anywhere from you know, 10 to up to 100 uh, through our uh, special events and sales departments. Uh, coming from an Italian family, uh, I know the concept of eating, in a, eating around the, the kitchen table. Everybody seems to mingle in the kitchens nowadays. Uh, family style is pretty much what I've been accustomed to all my life and that's what we're going to show you today. To start, we're gonna throw a little bit of uh, Italian vinaigrette, you know, right here uh, with some fried prosciutto. We're gonna, we're gonna warm it up a little bit in the microwave, you know, for about 30 seconds. You know, in the meantime, you know, I might have ready everything, you know, just to make it easier. Uh, we have our spinach, our baby spinach right here. I'm gonna put right here into the uh, mixing bowl. Really, really tip on this. When you're making a sala a home anywhere, you know, it's very essential when you put your dressing, don't just throw your dressing on the middle of the pasta, you know, go around of the bowl. That way, you know, you're gonna make sure that all the ingredients, you know, all the dressing is gonna mix together, you know, with the, with the, with the spinach. We can see, you know, we have our dressing ready. Still, you know, lightly steam, you know, really, really well, you know. We're gonna throw right on the sides of the bowl. We're gonna throw some fried prosciutto A little bit of a feta cheese. There you go, tomatoes. You know how you can tell when a tomato is ready, you know? It's a good tomato, you know, when it's ripe, not too hard, not too soft, you know, it's really, really, really wet. You know, after that, you know, we're gonna mix with a little bit of onions. We're gonna mix it trolley, you know, making sure that, you know, the, all the ingredients, you know, mix all together. Like you can see, all I have to do is chase a little bit, you know, of the mixing into the bowl. After that, we're gonna go to the presentation. We're gonna throw the spinach, you know, into the bowl. Like you can see, always saving the good stuff, you know, for the top, you know, for presentation. You know, and we're gonna garnish with more feta cheese and add a little bit of more prosciutto you know a little more prosciutto on top just like that we're gonna throw the oil right there oh i love the sizzling you know that means you know you oil your pan is ready the oil is gonna be ready you know we're gonna start putting our fresh garlic We're gonna dump the garlic right into it. And we're gonna caramelize our garlic. Oh, see, you hear, you can hear that, you know, this is, that's sizzling from the garlic, it's really, really good. You guys can see, you know, you, a very good tip. You gotta caramelize your garlic. Once it's ready, you know, that's gonna bring all the flavor to it. After that, we're gonna throw our tomatoes. Oh, look at that. 
We're gonna saute our tomatoes for a few seconds. We're gonna add our red crushed pepper. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a little bit spicy. And of course, our buku salt. You know, look at that. I mean, look at that consistency, it's bubbling, beautiful. We're gonna add our marinara. We're gonna add our vodka, of course, because that's how we call them, panela vodka. Our cream. We're gonna bring the sauce to simmer and cook it for about, you know, two minutes. Once your pasta is ready, you know, you're gonna toss it right here. You're gonna put it back on the pan. We're gonna throw some Parmesan cheese on it. Now the trick, you know. You're gonna make sure you're gonna flip the pasta. You know, beautiful, look at that, look at that. I mean, it's really, really good. You know, throw them into the bowl. You know, making sure you know your pan is clean, you know. All the goodies goes into the bowl. So that, you're gonna top it right here with your cheese. And look at that. It's beautiful. Pena la vodka. That's how we made pena la vodka. Next, Chef prepares another buca specialty, spaghetti a la norma. See, that color, you know, it's turning translucent, you know, it's really, really good. There you go, there's some tomatoes. After that, you know, we're gonna season with buca salt, marinara, We're gonna throw a little bit of uh, cubes of eggplant, bread it, feta cheese. We're gonna garnish with more cubes of eggplant, feta cheese. And look at that. This is our spaghetti and our marichero. What do you think? We should go and eat and sit down and have some lunch? You know, just to let you know, you know, if your family is as big as mine, you know, we as a Latinos, you know, we like to gather all together and always, you know, dessert, it's, you know, part of the meal. Always at the end, we can have a cheesecake, we can have a torta. Uh, also, you know, a buca di Beppo, you know, we have a tiramisu. It's, you know, nice size, you know, fit up to six people, you know, but we can uh, order, or you can order, I'm sorry, you know, uh, more than one. We finished up our visit by touching base with our host, Richard, as he spoke about wine pairings and how you might finish up a big family meal. Since you asked me, it's a great question, uh, the diversity of our restaurant. You know, you can come on in here as well, order some fine fresh food products, great pasta, nice salads, great chicken parmesan lasagnas. But we also have some uh, great wines that will match it to make your uh, evening a total uh, fine dining uh, experience. Uh, with the prosciutto spinach salad today, we paired that up with a Kendall Jackson Chardonnay. Uh, followed by with the penny alla vodka, we did this with a, uh, a Bella Sera Moscato, which means beautiful evening in Italian. And then I have a, a Mirasu Pinot Noir right here with our spaghetti alla norma. Uh, finally, for after you've indulged and enjoyed everything, we actually have a after dinner cordial, which is our limoncella, uh, which is a perfect aperitif to have. It cleanses the system, it relieves any type of spiciness, it's very refreshing and uh, it's a wonderful after dinner drink as well. It's a, it, we serve it in a chilled glass, the, the Caravella is uh, chilled as well. And it's a, it's a beautiful end to a perfect evening at Gucca de Beppo. Ciao.
only time I, only time I can drink on the job. <laughs>